Today I'm going to show you how to cut a person out of their background and put them on a pure white background, which is going to be perfect for putting them on your website. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna show you how to cut a person out of the background. It's gonna be super cool. It's actually really easy to do. I know it sounds complex, but we're basically taking our subject. We're gonna put her on a pure white background. We're gonna show you how to make sure that it's perfectly white because we're gonna be throwing this on a website and we wanna make sure like, okay, does it blend in perfectly with our white background? So we'll show you some tips on how to make sure that it is 100% white. The photo itself was cut off a little bit at the top of the subject's head. So we're gonna actually show you how to add more hair. Like we're gonna extend the image up. We're gonna throw a little bit of type and we're gonna be done. It's an awesome tutorial. We're gonna have so much fun, super useful for anything you wanna put on a website. So recently we've been chatting with the folks at Squarespace. They're super cool and we've got a new partnership going on. So this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a website, a domain or an online store, make it Squarespace. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. Now we're gonna start off with a super simple tool here. We're gonna use our magic wand tool. And basically I just need to select the area right around our subject. Now, big tip here, most of the time your selections are not gonna be perfect your first go round. They're gonna require a little bit of fine tuning. Not a big deal, we're gonna show you how to do it. So let's grab our magic wand tool. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and we're gonna choose a tolerance of 10 right now. That's just gonna make sure the higher your tolerance goes, basically the more you're gonna select. So we're gonna start with 10, and I'm just gonna focus again right here around my subject. There we go. I don't really need to select out here. That This is gonna be pretty easy. Basically, I just need to select this area right around my subject and in between hands and things like that. All right, get that little white area too. Just make sure you hold down the Shift key if you wanna add to your selection. Okay. Now in this case, I'm gonna, I'm like looking here and I'm like, okay, kinda just fades away. We do have some shirt here. Um, maybe I'm just gonna handle this manually. So let's just hit shift a couple times. It looks like I'm gonna just have to handle that manually, but that, again, it's not a big deal. So I've got this area selected. Now I'm gonna hold shift and click a couple times back here as well. There we go. And now we have that area selected. So with this selection active, it's like, it's a little bit on the like sloppy side. It's not perfect yet, but we can go ahead and fine tune that just a little bit. So I'm gonna click on the select and mask option. And this just allows us to really fine tune our selection. So we have a few different options here within the select and mask. At the top, you just have your quick selection tool, which basically you can just brush your selection in. And we have our refine edge brush tool. So the refine edge brush, this is actually really great when you're working with like hair. So I'm gonna start painting out here and you're gonna see it's just gonna kind of make this selection, the area around the hair is just gonna get a little bit nicer in terms of how our selection looks. I'm totally aware that the top of our image, we're gonna need to add more there. But just around this hair, you wanna use that quick selection just to like fine tune any, select, any areas right around here. Now I'm also gonna zoom in here and we're gonna see this is the area where it kind of just like didn't do exactly what we wanted. It's not really a big deal. You can go down to this tool here, which is just basically, uh, it allows you to brush it in. Uh, you can add or subtract by holding Alt or Option. So uh, by default, it's going to be it's gonna to add to my selection. Okay, so I'm just gonna add, here we go, and hold Alt or Option and subtract away. Keep in mind that I've selected out the background here. Okay, so as I'm painting this area in, that's basically uh, based on my background. Okay, now also everything looks pretty good except for you can see the edge of my subject's just a little bit jagged there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our feathering just a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring up our contrast a little bit more. There we go. So that just kind of like smooths that edge out. And if you do want to do any type of refinement, you know, you can definitely go in here with your refine brush. There we go, right there. And you can continue to refine some of these areas if you'd like. I'll just kind of paint that in there. Oops, didn't mean to go down there. All right, and you can see in that case, it got the thumbnail, but we're almost done here. Basically just want to do a quick little refinement and then we're good. So let's hit okay there. Now I went ahead and turned that into a selection. I'm gonna click on my layer mask icon and this is gonna turn this into a layer mask. So now you can see it's actually the exact opposite of what we want. So I'm just gonna click on my layer mask and hit control or command I. That's gonna invert my layer mask. 
and we can see we have our subject. There's a lot of extra stuff on this image, but it's gonna be super quick to get this done. So it may not look perfect, but actually most of our work is done in terms of getting our subject on a pure white background. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click here on my layer mask. And this is super cool because it gives you a visual of what your layer mask looks like. And basically anything that's white in this visual is going to be visible and anything that's black is invisible. So I'm just gonna grab my regular lasso tool. We don't need to feather it or anything like that. We're just gonna grab this and I'm just gonna make a selection over here. We're gonna go to edit, down to fill, and we're gonna fill this with black. There we go. And now let's go ahead and grab a selection right around there. We'll go to edit, down to fill, and we're gonna go to black. Now in this case, when I was using my refine brush, uh, it painted a little bit here, uh, basically just made part of the nose black, which means it's not gonna be selected. So I'm just gonna go in here with my regular old brush tool and just paint white on there. Again, white is visible and black is gonna be invisible in this view. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now let's hold Alt or Option. I'm gonna click back here again and we have our subject on a completely transparent background. So although she was on a light colored background, if we wanted to be completely white, honestly, the best way to do this is to use a solid color fill layer. So we're gonna to go to Layer, down to New Fill Layer and over to Solid Color. Hit OK there and just click and drag this all the way up to the top for white. You should see your hue and your saturation should be at zero your brightness should be at 100. Okay, so that's pure white. Now we're just gonna click and drag that right below our subject, and now our subject's on a pure white background, which is really great. Now there are some advantages to a pure white background that traditional photos don't have. First, if I hit C for the crop tool, I can resize this any size that I'd like. So I'm just gonna kind of bring that a little bit bigger there, and you can see when I hit enter, it automatically filled all that in with white because I have this solid color fill layer. Okay, now things do look pretty good, except when I expanded it out, well, we have a couple of issues. First, we do wanna just do a little bit of the cleanup with the hair. It's like, all right, but it, the, hair, the hair could definitely look better. And obviously we need to fill in this area here on the top. So let's go ahead and start. We're gonna clean up some of our selection with the hair, and then we're gonna fill in some missing head room. <laughs> Basically just make more hair. So to go ahead and refine this selection a little bit better with the hair, I'm gonna hold shift and click on this layer mask. That's gonna just temporarily disable the layer mask. Now what's pretty cool here is with this layer mask temporarily disabled, now I can actually select some of the hair, right? So I'm just gonna create a new layer. You can do this in a bunch of different ways. I'm just gonna go to select color range from here and I'm gonna click here on the hair and that's basically, again, it's just gonna select the color of the hair. So you can see, depending on where I click, it, it's gonna like select more or less, and you can increase or decrease your feathering, and you can even add to this as well. All right, so here we go. We've now selected a bunch of this hair color, and there we go. We made it a little bit more visible. So let's go ahead and hit okay there. Now, keep in mind, it's same deal like before. Anything that's light colored here is gonna get selected. Anything that's dark is not gonna get selected. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now here on my layer mask, remember all I have to do is continue working on my layer mask. So the hair is selected. So I'm gonna paint with white on my layer mask and that's gonna just add a little bit more of that fine detail. So I'm gonna hit controller command H real quick and that just hides your selection. It allows you to just see what you're doing a little bit better. So let's paint this in, there we go. And you can see we just have a little bit better, like a little bit more detail on the hair because I just selected the color of the hair and I'm just painting this back in just a little bit. You know, it's just gonna go from, there we go. I'll do another one right up there. It's just gonna add a little bit more detail. It went from looking a little bit like Photoshop-y, not so real, and now it looks more real. And you can see our layer mask looks pretty good too. So again, if you need to go in here and just paint black on your layer mask a little bit, because it, it, this might, when you do this, by the way, it might pull a little bit in from like your background Okay, not a big deal. We'll just kind of paint that away a little bit. All right, let's do this one more time right up here. So let's hold shift and click on our layer mask. Let's make this other layer visible. So shift, click on your layer mask. Let's go ahead and select this hair here. So we'll go to select color range and we'll go ahead and select the hair right up there. Okay, and this time I'm gonna bring up my fuzziness just a little bit, okay? You have light hair on a black background. That's the perfect selection there. All right, so let's hit okay there. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask and I'm just gonna paint white on my layer mask. There we go. All right, and you can see as I'm painting white on here, it's just gonna fill in 
I'm gonna just really zoom in there. I'm just gonna fill in a little bit more of the hair detail. It's gonna make it look organic and just make it look a lot more realistic. All right, very good. So our subject looks pretty good. She's on a pure white background and uh, basically the next thing we need to do, we just need to fill in the top of her head. And to do that, we're just gonna copy uh, an existing part of another type of her hair. We're gonna warp it, transform it, all kinds of cool stuff and just put it on the top of her head. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. So let's right click on it. I'm gonna go down to duplicate layer. There we go, hit okay. And then I'm gonna right click on my layer mask and I'm gonna go to apply layer mask. So we've got another copy. So here's our subject and here's another copy of our subject. Looking pretty good. Now for this copy of the subject, there we go. For this copy here, basically I don't need the majority of my subject. Really all I want from this is her hair. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a selection around like the hair area that I want, okay? And then I'm gonna invert my selection, select and then down to inverse, okay? And then I'm gonna hit the delete key. It's just gonna get rid of everything. Okay, so now let's deselect and we just got this a little bit. So what we can do is just lower the opacity a little bit and I'm just gonna zoom in and basically we're just gonna like rotate this around and I'm gonna start warping this. So you can hold control or command and click on these corners here, which is super cool. And you can kind of like warp this into, into place there. Okay. So we're just, again, like warping this into the, the top of her head. So you just want to make sure it's like flows in and flows out pretty, pretty good. All right. Let's hit that checkbox up there. We'll bring our opacity back up to a hundred. I'm going to hold alt or option and click on my layer mask, which just made, makes the layer mask black. And then I'm just gonna paint white on my layer mask just right here. There we go. And because we did a decent job, like, you know, putting it in the right place, it's just gonna kind of flow in, which is really cool. Now on a layer right above that, if you want, you can always grab your clone stamp tool and you could clone stamp in some additional highlights if you want, just to like help it, you know, help it fit with the rest of what we got going on here with the hair. And there we go. So it kind of like extends on into there. So we have more Let's just lower the opacity of that a little bit. So basically we just added a little bit of hair. Basically our subject is on a pure white background, which is totally cool. Now this has a ton of different uses. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple of graphic design elements to this photo so you get an idea of how you can actually use this on a web page or whatever. So I went ahead and made this before this tutorial. It's just like totally sample ad copy, but basically uh, you can download all this, by the way, if you want to download this template, if you want to download the image, everything, you can just download it all on flurn.com and just follow the link right down below. So we're just going to grab our move tool here and I'm going to click and drag right here. Oh, that's weird how small that is. So let's just grab our move tool. I'm going to click and drag this here from one image to another one. Let's hit F for full screen. So let's say your image, you know, was only, you know, this large or whatever. There we go. Not a big deal because we have this color fill layer in the background. Just grab your crop tool and you can extend that on out. So let's go ahead and extend that out on this direction. And we're just going to bring this out there. And then you can see like, obviously this has got a lot of use for web print layout, whatever. Now, one other tip that I like to do is right click here in your background and go to select custom color and just go ahead and click this drag up, just go all the way up to white and hit okay. And it's gonna put that on pure white. So this is just another way of checking like, does my image have a pure white background? And if it does, you're not gonna be able to see a transition between your image and what's going on in the background. If it's got a little bit of gray in it, whatever, obviously you'll see that here. So let's go back. I'm gonna pop that back into light gray. We're gonna try another crop here. So let's hit C for the crop tool and just drag this up uh, in this direction. There we go. And just kind of put this uh, right in there as well. So you can just kind of see like getting your subject on a pure white background now gives you a ton of options. You can just make this whatever size you want and kind of fit different graphic design elements around your image as well. So you can see there's a ton of use here and obviously you can, well, let's go ahead. We have a couple of layers for our subject. So I'm gonna shift click on all those layers. There we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make that into a smart object. Just right click and make that a smart, job, a smart object. So you can move your subject around you can move your different layers around. And of course you can crop your image differently, basically to anything you want. So really cool, a ton of uses. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before and the after. 
All right, guys, that's all there is to it. And remember, the big key here is once you cut your subject out, put a solid color fill layer on the bottom and make sure that's filled with white. That's gonna make sure you have that pure white background, which is gonna be perfect for putting it on your website. And speaking of putting it on your website, I do this all the time, whether it's on flurn.com or my own personal website. Oftentimes you want the images to just disappear beautifully into the white space on your website. So I just created my own website on squarespace.com. It took like 45 minutes, it was incredibly easy. They have all these templates that are like, okay, I just click this, this, and this. Uh, now I have a website that was incredibly easy. So if you're looking to create a website, head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash flurn to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial, guys. I hope you had a great time hanging out with me. I'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs> I'm in my underwear too, by the way. We're all in our underwear. <laughs> I think this is a health code violation. <laughs> I'm not allowed in the kitchen. There's a lot of violations. I feel violated just from my own talking. Whatever's coming out of my mouth, I feel violated. <laughs>